In today's video, we're going to be talking about Friends, a very popular sitcom which was first aired in 1994. Even if you've never watched this series, I'm sure you would have heard of it because it's often recommended to people who are learning English, even though it's such an old series. So in today's video we're going to be talking about this series and why it's still relevant today. Teenagers and young people from all over the world have watched this series even though it was first aired almost 30 years ago. This is because the series explores universal themes like friendship, love and getting older or becoming an adult. At the beginning of the series, the characters are young, they're in their early 20s, whereas in the 10th season, they've already hit 30 and their priorities in life have changed. They're settling down more, getting married, starting their own family and even buying their own house. And if you were watching it when it was first aired, then you would be growing up with the characters as well. What I do find interesting though is the fact that people can watch this series now on streaming platforms and you can watch the 10 seasons in 3 months. So in that sense you're not really growing up with the characters like you would have done at the time, but it's still very popular. I think it's because a lot of the characters are very relatable as well. For example, Monica is smart and has worked for everything that she has and even though she is annoying at times with her obsessive cleaning or her strict rules, she's never been the favourite child. Ross has always been the favourite child and she's always been underestimated and looked down on by her parents. No matter what she has achieved, Ross has always done it better. So I think that a lot of people relate with her because they've experienced something similar. Some people do find her annoying because she's a bit of a control freak and she's overly competitive sometimes, which can make her come across as quite selfish at times. Also, she wasn't very popular at school and she was teased a lot by her looks, but she overcame all of the issues that she had and at the end of the series she gets what she has always wanted which is a family. This is just one example of how these relatable characters have made this show timeless. The clever writing and the hilarious jokes are also a big part of this series. It is true that the jokes are sometimes a bit too cheesy and predictable, but it's definitely entertaining. There are a lot of references in the show, and if you watch it nowadays as a young person, you won't get a lot of the jokes, because they're cultural references which were relevant at the time, but not so much now, especially if you're from another country. Like, sometimes when they're talking about a famous actor or a character, they make a joke about that. I don't get the joke because I'm too young for it and because I'm not from the United States. A lot of people have asked me about this when they have watched the series and told me that they didn't understand a few of the jokes, but, but I believe that it doesn't really matter. None of these jokes really affect the storyline, so it doesn't affect your understanding of what is happening in the series. This show has become so iconic that some of the moments of the show have become ingrained in popular culture. There are particular scenes that come to mind, like when Ross dresses up as the holiday armadillo, or when Ross goes for a spray tan and has an incident. And even today, when you go to a gift shop, you'll see t-shirts, mugs and all different types of uh, things that you can buy as gifts that are sold in shops all over the world, not just in the United States. One thing that I have noticed that is different nowadays is the fact that 
In this series, there are so many compilation or flashback episodes. Flashback episodes are basically episodes in which they mostly show clips of scenes from previous seasons. When I was watching it recently, I wondered why there were so many episodes like this. I think there is one per season, which is quite a lot. And then I realised that I was watching it on a streaming platform like Netflix or HBO. And I had watched the whole season in about five months. So about two seasons per month. I realised that nowadays we have access to all of these episodes at all times. So we can watch our favourite episodes or scenes over and over, especially on YouTube. We don't even have to watch the whole episode. But 30 years ago, you had to watch it on TV, and unless you bought the DVDs, like, years later, you couldn't watch the series whenever you wanted. So these flashbacks or compilation episodes would be quite nostalgic for some people, because if they were watching the ninth season in 2003, they wouldn't have watched some of the scenes for over eight years. Like I say, if they haven't bought the DVDs, the box set of Friends. The consistent quality of this show also helped it to become so popular. The cast and everyone involved in this show maintained a high level of consistency in terms of performance. Unlike other shows, there isn't really a bad season or bad episode, apart from the flashback episodes, which may be a bit monotonous for some viewers. One thing that I do dislike of the writing and the character development of this show is the fact that the characters' quirks that they had at the beginning of the series became their whole personalities at the end of the show, like in season 8, 9 or 10. You will notice this if you have finished the series and then watch it again, like if you finish the 10th season and then you go back to the first season. You will see that in the first seasons, Joey isn't as silly or stupid as he is in the ninth or 10th season. And Monica is a lot more controlling and competitive in the later seasons that it becomes quite annoying. I think that you wouldn't have realised this at the time, because like we said, 10 years had gone by and you wouldn't have re-watched the episodes so often. It seems like they took one characteristic of each character and made it their entire character. And at times it just felt a bit like lazy writing because you're going for the easy joke. So it became a bit predictable. Also, some of the jokes have not aged well and are not politically correct. And these jokes wouldn't be well received if this show was first aired today. I'm obviously not going to list the moments out, but if you have watched the show, there are probably some scenes where you have thought, hmm, I think that might be considered offensive nowadays. If you have watched the show, you were probably surprised by the amount of actors who have guest starred on Friends. Brad Pitt, Bruce Willis and Brooke Shields are some examples of actors who have been on this show for an episode. If you haven't watched this series, I do think that it is worth a watch. You will be able to watch the characters navigate their way through life, friendship and love in the city of New York. It will definitely make you laugh and you'll be able to expand your English vocabulary and practice your listening skills. I do think that it is a good series to practice listening and expanding your vocabulary because it's a sitcom. So that means that the events normally happen in the same place, at their houses or at the cafe where they always have a coffee. The language that they use is daily life language, so it's quite informal and 
It's quite predictable, so it's easy to follow the story. I think it's good to watch a series like this rather than a series which has very technical vocabulary, like at a hospital or something like that. In this series, you're following their day-to-day -day lives and they're talking about their relationships, friendships and jobs. So it's definitely vocabulary that you will be using too in English. If you have enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one.